Welcome everyone and thank you for tuning in to hear my trading and market updates. This is Uncle Frank and I'm not a financial advisor, nor is any of the content to be construed as financial advice. This channel is for entertainment purposes only. Please remember to hit the like button if you enjoyed the presentation and be sure to subscribe to the channel so you're alerted when I have new information to share. So now let's get into the latest updates. Hey, welcome back everyone. Over the past three years, AMC shareholders have endured thousands of negative articles. Let's just call them what they are, hit pieces, and near constant mocking from the likes of so-called journalists like Gasparino or analysts like Rich Greenfield. Now, the apes aren't always on their best behavior either. Take this tweet aimed at Rich Greenfield. Serious question, is having no neck a prerequisite to becoming a financial analyst? To be fair, Little Richie has a fat sack under his chin that could suffocate a small cow. But Gasbag immediately came to his defense. Serious question, is having no brains a prerequisite to buying AMC from your mom's basement trading floor? What Charlie deliberately fails to understand is Rich Greenfield went on national TV and gave AMC a one penny price target. Is that the level of maturity we should expect from someone like him? Why does Fox Business allow a journalist like Gasparino to directly attack retail investors so brazenly? Charlie even took the time once to attack my looks on Twitter. Don't worry, Frank. After you lose all your money trading stock, there's always the carnival freak show that will take you. Ha ha ha. Look, Uncle Frank has thick skin. I can take it. And to be fair... If I had a wife that looks like a cement truck, I would be crabby too. But today, I want to talk about the things that Charlie, Richie, and the financial media refuse to discuss. They pretend the only reason we buy the stock is because we saw a meme on Reddit or Twitter. There are many things these people just simply refuse to acknowledge. For one, they said AMC was going to go bankrupt, but it didn't. Number two... They said it would never be profitable again, but it finally has. Number three, they said we would never do better than pre-pandemic or 2019, but our last third quarter was the best one in our 103-year history, and that obviously includes 2019. But the worst part about their failure to be real, unbiased journalists and analysts is they refuse to even acknowledge the things that drive the apes to buy and hold the stock in the first place and why most of them refuse to give up. They never discuss naked short selling or the possible existence of billions of synthetic shares. Many apes believe they own the float two, even three times over prior to the conversion and reverse split. They deliberately never mention the ridiculous three-year history of failures to deliver on the stock, the constant spoofing and layering of AMC, the outrageous, statistically impossible level of securities lending stemming from AMC, the abuse or misuse of ATSs or dark pools. Did even one journalist mention that Ape was halted 10 times on its maiden trading day? Well, I'm going to cover some of the things they refuse to in this episode, and I believe some of these things will be the exact same topics they cover in the oversight committee hearings in the future, where the SEC will be forced to explain why it did nothing about the greatest securities fraud incident in our entire history, just like they did with Bernie Madoff. We're going to analyze Wall Street's beef with AMC from the top down, starting with Equilend. For those of you who don't know, Equilend is a securities lending platform started in late 2001 by a consortium of leading financial services institutions. From their own website, Equilend is a leading provider of trading, post-trade, market data, and clearing services for the securities finance industry, uh, and they're owned by Bank of America. BlackRock, Credit Suisse, Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, Morgan Stanley, National Bank of Canada, Northern Trust, State Street, and UBS. Uh, the CEO at Equilend is Brian Lamb. I think he's been there like 18 years. 
He hails from Barclays and Wells Fargo and was also the assistant mater D and captain at the Montauk uh, Yacht Club. Now, let's discuss the history of the owners of Equiland and their individual relationships with AMC. The first owner of Equiland we will discuss is Bank of America, a short seller of AMC. In fact, at one time, B of A was on the list of the top 10 institutions shorting AMC stock. This is Kenny's prime broker and one of his chief lenders. 87.2% uh, of Citadel's net derivative assets are held with a subsidiary of Bank of America Merrill Lynch, which serves as clearing and prime broker. In December of 2023, Citadel launched a $400 million loan with proceeds to be used for general corporate purposes, including trading capital, Bloomberg reported. The new debt, which holds the lowest rung of investment grade ratings, will be added to the company's existing $3.54 billion term loan. B of A is leading the transaction with institutional investors deciding if they will participate. But you know what, guys? Do you know what happens when you short a hundred year old American company so you can profit from the misery of the pandemic? I'll tell you, you reap what you sow. Bad office loans mount at Bank of America. Morgan Stanley says commercial real estate will crash harder than during the great financial crisis. Default risk grows on 1.5 trillion in commercial real estate debt. Now let's talk about another partner at Equilend, BlackRock. Uncle Frank, I don't remember anything specific about BlackRock and AMC. Well, that's because the media never discussed this incident, not even for one minute, only the crypto guys did. From the Crypto Times, SEC Chair Gary Gensler accused in Citadel market maker manipulation. The current chair of the SEC, Gary Gensler, who recently stepped up his push to get crypto trading platforms to register with the Wall Street regulator, is facing massive criticism after being accused of market manipulation by Citadel Securities and Citadel Market Maker. While he is accused of shorting crypto-focused stocks like AMC Theaters and GameStop through Vanguard and BlackRock, the SEC chair is facing a Change.org petition. According to the petition, Gary Gensler should resign as he failed to protect retail investors from fraud because of naked short selling and dark pool abuse by Citadel Securities and Citadel Market Maker. Of course, this went nowhere. Now, I don't want you to worry, guys. It looks like the commercial real estate crisis is starting to burden BlackRock as well. BlackRock is seeking to sell an office complex in Shanghai at about a 30% discount from its purchase price, people with knowledge of the matter said, reflecting the sluggish commercial property market in China's biggest city. The New York-based asset manager is marketing the property in northwestern Shanghai at a reduced rate to speed up the sale, according to the people who asked not to be identified because the information is private. A representative for BlackRock declined to comment. Now let's cover these co-owners of Equilend, Credit Suisse, and UBS together. Every ape remembers the war we had with Credit Suisse, a short seller of AMC, the company that put a 95 cent price target on our stock and ended up going lower than that itself before it blew up. UBS was forced to absorb Credit Suisse and now has inherited its problems which may lead to its demise as well. I think these headlines say it all. UBS to buy Credit Suisse for nearly $3.25 billion to calm turmoil. UBS reports $785 million loss due to costs of Credit Suisse integration. Swiss Banking Group has cut 13,000 jobs this year as it recovers from rushed rescue deal. UBS hit by old toxic debt costs ahead of hard Credit Suisse tasks. UBS takes $268 million hit for Credit Suisse misconduct. UBS to pay $1.4 billion to settle financial crisis fraud case. And then there's Goldman Sachs, the company apes on Twitter love to hate for relentlessly spoofing AMC's stock 
which seems like an everyday occurrence. They seem to do it so brazenly, you would think one of their former partners was running the SEC or something. It's become so prevalent, there's even a running spoof report on Twitter as of November, which sadly is the most current information I can retrieve. Goldman Sachs is still a putholder against AMC. And now we move to Equilen co-owner J.P. Morgan Chase. Now, Uncle Frank, are they short AMC? Well, I can't find that data directly, but they are 100% owners of hedge fund Highbridge Capital, who were significant putholders against AMC. Highbridge was also one of the five lien holders at Highcroft Mining when AMC bought into that previously bankrupt gold mine. All five of those lien holders at the time were or are either short sellers of AMC or put holders against it when Adam made that investment. Fun fact, when JP Morgan bought a controlling stake in Highbridge for more than a billion, sex offender Jeffrey Epstein earned a finder's fee of about 15 million, the Wall Street Journal reported. JP Morgan's relationship with Highbridge and Epstein turned out to be an expensive one last year. Judge approves J.P. Morgan's $290 million settlement with Epstein victims. And from CNN, J.P. Morgan agrees to pay $75 million to settle lawsuit with U.S. Virgin Islands. Uncle Frank broke the story about J.P. Morgan, Highbridge, and its connections to Highcroft and AMC seven months ago. Hit that subscribe button if you like being ahead of the curve. Now, Uncle Frank, what about those other names you mentioned that also own Equilend? Well, if you mean the National Bank of Canada, yes, they held a pile of puts against AMC like everyone else, but they sold them. In their case, that may have been a hedge. You have to look at both sides of the trade. State Street Northern Trust actually owns some AMC, but Northern has been selling like many other institutions. Uh, in November, their quarterly change in shares dropped 86.5%. In August, State Street actually added 1.7%. In November, UBS dumped 107.5% quarterly change in shares. And in December, Vanguard also reduced by 73%. Institutional investors have sold a total of 78.6 million shares in the past 24 months. That represents about $2.19 billion in transactions. But what about Adam Aaron, his senior management team, and the entire board of directors? Well, we all know collectively they haven't purchased one single share of AMC in over six years, but sold over a billion to us. That entire group owns less than 1%, actually less than a half of 1% at 0.28%. But I don't want you Adam Aaron fanboys to worry. The 2023 stock bonuses should be going out soon, so Adam and company will have plenty more free stock to blow out of. So there it is, guys, the top of the food chain, the multi-trillion dollar behemoth, the secretive securities lending cartel, all good friends of AMC Entertainment, wouldn't you say? There's only two names on the screen that weren't short AMC or long puts against it. But now let's get to the important stuff. Okay, now I'm about to blow your mind, but we've got to start back in 2022. Global securities lending revenue up 6.6% year over year for 2022, says DataLend. That's a division of Equilend, right? The global securities finance industry generated $9.89 billion in revenue for lenders in 2022, a 6.6% increase from 2021, according to DataLend. Global broker-to-broker -broker activity, where broker-dealers lend and borrow securities from each other, totaled an additional $2.73 billion in revenue for 2022. The top five earners in 2022 were Lucid, GameStop, Beyond Meat, Sirius, and Cassava Sciences. The securities in total generated $769 million for lenders over the course of 2022, an increase from the $413 million generated by 2021's top five earners. Stay with me. Okay, so $9.8 billion in 2022. Now let's do 2023. Data Lend. Securities lending revenue in 2023 reached modern record of $10.7 billion, up 8.6% 
over 2022. Now, when you scroll down the release a little bit, you see this. AMC stock generated $511 million in revenue for lenders. That's a half billion, most of any security globally. Globally, guys, not Google, not Tesla, not Exxon. A little theater stock out of Kansas, but there's more. Okay, now this article is from September, so it doesn't even include the third and fourth quarter of 2023, but I need you to check this out. You see, this is the H1 data, so the first half of the year. U.S. equities, the powerhouse for near record securities lending revenues during H1 of 2023. Now, check this out. During the H1 period, all of the top 10 highest generating equities across all regions were U.S. listed assets. AMC outpaced all of the other names, generating in excess of the $450 million alone. AMC generated more than the next four highest revenue generating names combined over the H1 period, including Beyond Meat, Lucid Group, Upstart, and GameStop, right? Okay, guys, I want you to know when you add this to the history of FTDs on AMC, this is absolutely impossible without the existence of synthetics, in my opinion. And Wall Street knows it far better than we do. Ask yourself, what was the number of AMC shares outstanding before the conversion and reverse split? 520 million? There were 3.8 million shareholders back when we were in court. So if each shareholder owned only 136 shares apiece, we own the float and that's without institutional holders so where did all this other stock come from to lend this is why you have to complete the survey at projectpopcorn.com if they get a good enough size sample we may prove the apes own the float two or three times over before the conversion this is the end of the argument by the way ape its conversion and the reverse split was exactly what Wall Street needed to escape this mess. And Derek Van Zant of City planned it in our boardroom. Then Adam Aaron and Philip Later of Morgan Stanley signed off on it. There is no more arguing. Okay, so now we know who Equiland is. They're Wall Street. But are you still wondering why every time AMC management does anything, it hurts the price of the stock? Well, stop wondering. Wall Street was short AMC. Wall Street runs AMC and has run AMC since Adam got there. Now, here's a headline from last week. Equilend to be acquired by Welsh, Carson, Anderson, and Stowe the global tech data and analytics company for the securities finance industry today announced that a private equity firm WCAS has agreed to acquire a majority stake in the company. The acquisition is set to close in 2Q of 2024 subject to regulatory approvals. In addition to the acquisition, WCAS has committed a further $200 million investment to support organic growth initiatives and acquisitions by Equilend. Equilend operates NGT, the regulated securities lending trading platform through which more than 2.4 trillion of transactions are executed each month by market participants around the globe. Equilend was advised by Broadhaven and Paul Hastings and WCAS was advised by Citi and Kirkland and Ellis. Okay, so Citi and Kirkland and Ellis are advising WCAS on acquiring a majority stake in Equilend. Now that sounds familiar because Citi used Kirkland Ellis to assist AMC in acquiring Carmike back in 2016 for Adam Aaron. Citi has and still holds over 1 million puts against AMC. So they've profited greatly from a decline in the stock price. They still have a sell recommendation on the stock and they just lowered their price target again. But Citi is also our chief investment banker. According to email evidence, Citi devised the ape, its conversion and the reverse split. 
Derek Van Zant introduced Adam to Hamanchu Galati of Antara Capital, a hedge fund, to rig the shareholder vote, in my opinion. Antara itself wouldn't exist without funding from Blackstone, a notorious private equity firm that recently closed one of its hedge funds. Okay, what am I trying to show you here? AMC is not run by a bunch of movie executives from Hollywood. AMC is run top to bottom and left to right by Wall Street. Adam Aaron was a senior operating partner of Apollo, a private equity firm that paid him for over a year after, after he departed to run AMC. Our CFO, who sold over $17 million worth of AMC over the past five years, is from mergers and acquisitions at Morgan Stanley. The leader of our board of directors is still a senior advisor to Morgan Stanley's institutional trading division. It's my sincere hope you believe me when I tell you these people will do absolutely nothing intentional to hurt the interests of Wall Street. And for one very good reason, they are Wall Street. For example, any dividend that the YouTube YouTubers out there are telling you will shock the hedgies and frighten them into covering in a MOAS, you know, because they'll have to pay the dividend too. Just remember, these are the same men that will plan it, telegraph it to Wall Street, and even manage it for them. It's my honest opinion. These men are being very careful that there is never a MOAS. Yeah, I said it. The only entities not on the screen are the predatory short hedge funds and the regulators. That's for the next slide. So here are the regulators and some related entities. Which one do you think is going to help us? The SEC? Gary Gensler or Hester Pierce? Maybe we'll get another phase six, right? Or maybe FINRA, not after MMTLP. This Department of Justice? The guys that searched Trump's kids' room but didn't search Hunter Biden's room? Or maybe it'll be the Limit Up, Limit Down Committee. Maybe they'll help us after halting Ape 10 times on its maiden day of trading. Or maybe the DTCC will stop what they're doing, even though they're owned by the brokers. Guys, if you haven't learned that these people won't lift a finger to help us after all we've endured, then you'll never learn. What's worse is it's an election year. They will not install and enforce some new rule or law that will upend a hedge fund and take down a prime broker uh, and a clearing firm. Those are messy headlines, right? Rules, laws mean nothing without enforcement. The only thing we can count on from these guys is they will push back on the hedgies when it comes to the basis trade and over leverage because that affects them di directly. No, none of these people are going to lift a finger to help us. And I hope I'm wrong, but I'm not. Wall Street has donated millions and millions of dollars to politicians and the regulators have become bureaucrats instead of an enforcement mechanism. Okay, they've lost the will to investigate any of the big guys. That's why they only bust the little guys and hand out small fines to the giants, right? I'll give you an example. When Brad Garlinghouse and Ripple when they do something wrong, Gary Gensler wants three quarters of a billion dollars. But when Ken Griffin mismarks millions of trades, longs that were shorts, it's a $7 million fine. Wake up, guys. These people are not going to help us. Okay, Uncle Frank, you talk a lot of shit. Now, how can we win this thing? I will tell you the only path to victory I see for the AMC apes. Number one, the apes must reunite and become shareholder activists. Our power has always been in our numbers. A shareholder activist is an investor that likes and supports the company, likes and supports the stock, but fights management tooth and nail over any policy that doesn't enhance shareholder value. For those of you that don't know, Ryan Cohen is a good example of a shareholder activist a big shareholder of GME, a CEO of GME who doesn't take a salary and is trying to enact policies that will enhance shareholder value. You got it? 
really support the company. That's number two. I know a lot of my subscribers are hurt and dejected and blame Adam, regulators, and predatory short hedge funds. But blame alone does nothing. You have to fight. A lot of people no longer support the theater because of the stock price and all the things they've learned. But that is not the answer. Imagine if you and your best friend from high school owned a highly successful hot dog stand and you discovered your friend was stealing from the business. Now, would you begin the process of confronting and removing him? Or would you tell everyone to stop going to your hot dog stand? Please try to remember, whatever the future holds for AMC, everything, everything is always better with exploding top line revenue. So I will continue to see movies at AMC, buy popcorn and popcorn buckets, and do what I can on social media to support the company. Also, try to remember that CEOs and boards come and go. This company has survived over a hundred years, and if more incriminating information comes to light, it will survive Adam, this board of directors, and City too. In fact, I think we're in better shape than City right now. Do what you can to support your business. There's nothing illegal about promoting a business you own. So post this and other good videos on your social media. Fight the good fight, guys. This company has achieved some amazing milestones, and it could improve from here with our support. Number three, do your part. Go to AMC Project Popcorn, print out the affidavit, call your broker, and populate the document accurately. Go to your bank and sign it in front of a notary, and then upload it at the website. The end result is is we may prove the existence of synthetic shares once and for all. And what if this whole thing goes down the toilet in the end? God forbid. Well, this invaluable evidence could mean the difference between a $50 settlement check or a $50,000 one. You don't know and neither do I. Okay, but I'm going to do what I can to fight this corruption. Number four, I will never tell you to buy, sell, or hold any security or cryptocurrency. This is not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. But I believe the only catalyst that will cause a short covering event is a black or white swan event. Some sudden event that attacks the leverage chain of the predatory short hedge funds forcing their prime brokers to rearrange their portfolios, which is a nice way to say margin call. The skies are currently full of potential swans, and don't tell me they never happen. Because when Archegos went down, they took a 167-year-old Swiss bank with them. Try to remember how many hedge funds have gotten their asses kicked in or vaporized since we started this Hazarai. Also remember, our enemies are leveraged up to 60 to 1 or even higher because they conceal their real positions and use offshore accounts so a real swan can seriously F up their weekend. Now, do you want to know the next swan that could fly in? Well, tomorrow begins the liquidation hearing for Evergrande. They've kicked that can down the road again and again, and now it's time for the unrealized losses to become realized ones. Stay tuned. On a personal note, I want my subscribers to know I'm still in the trenches with you. I've been buying the new 52 week lows when I get alerts, averaging down my position. On the screen, I shared my best fill at 402. I know I could lose my entire investment because maybe the powers that be are planning another pandemic for us. But speaking only for myself, I feel the hedgies can't win if I refuse to sell, and I can't win if I refuse to buy. You do what's best for you. Do your research. Speak with your financial advisor. Try to remember, this is a high-risk investment, and we picked the fight with the most diabolical hedge funds and prime brokers on the planet, and they break the securities rules and laws with impunity. But also remember, these people have a tendency to destroy themselves. They have every advantage in the world and had to cheat to beat us. And they may bribe politicians and the regulators may look the other way. But the fact remains in this life, you reap what you sow, good or bad, and the harvest is coming.
Thank you for all your support. Hey, I want to thank you for watching, and please remember to hit the like button after this slide if you enjoyed the presentation. Subscribe to the channel and set the alert so you're notified when I have new information to share. See you at the bell.